and welcome back to Awaken Thai Yoga with Prima Loka. So today we're going to do another Shine Bright sequence and we're going to focus specifically on yoga that, yoga asanas that would be good for you if you do a lot of running or walking. So there's a lot of a lot that goes on with the, a lot of physical impact on the body if you do a lot of running and also if you do a lot of walking especially um, walking with pace as opposed to gentle strolling what happens a lot of the time is that our muscles they tend to shorten and they become tighter and often we don't spend enough time elongating them and restoring them, doing restorative work on them before running and after running. So that's what we're going to focus on today is just the really good postures for um, restoring, elongating, you know, muscles, fibers and tendons, ligaments that are put under a lot of stress as well as the joints that are put under a lot of stress during um, the repetitive impact that running can often cause. We all know that you know if you do a lot of running or walking you can suffer from tight hamstrings, um, tight shins and even your feet become tight. The um, gastrocnemius, the calf muscles, um, you can store a lot of tension up in your shoulders and your neck and the traps area of your back due to the physicality and the impact. So the body can be put under a lot of stress and a physical stress and the um, so yoga will help to bring balance as well as strength and increase your range of motion and help you sink your breath. So let's get going. Those are just a few of the um, benefits. So I'm going to ask you to come. The first pose we're going to move into, uh, so come to sit on your heels, um, is up into Sumedha Asana or Mountain Downward Dog Pose. Actually, before we start, I'm going to ask you to sit in between in a version of Hero's Pose. So if you can widen um, the heels apart and sit your buttocks in between and already you should start to feel a nice stretch coming into your um, your shins and your feet and your ankles. Draw the navel in, lengthen through the spine, drop the shoulders away from the ears and we'll focus on a few breaths as we always do. Quieten the mind Become aware of the sound of the inhalation and the exhalation. Draw the breath, long, full breaths up from the tailbone to the top of the spine. From the top of the spine back to the tailbone. Focus on this rhythm and this pattern as you breathe in and out, up and down the spine. Relaxed on the knees or just loose down by the sides, wherever it's comfortable for you to have them. The thought with the thumb and forefinger can be joined if that's comfortable. Tuck down the chin slightly and lengthen through the back of the neck. Continue this long, full in and out breath. Sitting in hero's pose. physical benefits that we're going to create for our 
our body. We just want to keep firmly um, in touch with our breath, create that um, calming and restorative effect through the rest of the body, balance the mind. We're looking at bringing balance not only to the physical body, but our breath and our energy, balancing our entire being. So coming up now onto the heels, drawing the navel in, sweeping the hands out long in front of us, finding yourself on your knees, tucking your toes under, drawing your navel back towards the spine, lift up, lift the buttocks up to the sky, come up onto your toes, spread the toes wide from the little toe all the way to space between the toes. My knees are bent and then push back with the buttocks. Rotate the tailbone towards the sky. Feel the belly start to concave. Have the head resting in between the arms, insides of the elbows facing each other and then slowly start to ease the heels down towards the floor. The arms are about shoulder width apart, the legs or the feet are around hip width apart. Push back as you rotate the tailbone to the sky, push and extend back through the calves, backs of the thighs, feel the hamstrings start to lengthen all the way, feel the stretch all the way up into the hips. to do that if you're feeling a strain then you can bring at least one hand back make your fists and place your forehead on it we're not going to spend too long here though walk the hands towards the top of the mat really start to walk and get length through from the shoulders through the biceps start to feel a nice stretch coming through the tricep also walk the fingers a little bit further it's almost as if it's starting to pull the buttocks back up off the heels as you walk towards the mat and then exhale and ease back inhale come up onto the knees 
drop down onto your elbows and your lower arms and we have a parallel distance between the insides of both elbows which are around sh shoulder width apart look back to our knees and which are stacked under our hips we're going to drop the forehead down to the mat and we cup the crown of the head we inhale tuck the toes under and push up and the elbows are taking most of the body weight but the crown of the head is in touch with the hands and just front further from the crown forward is in touch with the mat and then we're going to ask our feet and to to lower towards the mat so find the space that will allow you to lower the heels towards the mat push into the heels rotate the tailbone and feel a deep stretch from the insteps all the way back through the heels up through the gastric nemus all the way up into the hamstrings into the hip flexors length through the spine inhale exhale push down into the heels inhale exhale drop to the knees this time bring the hands all the way back behind you lower the forehead to the floor Inhale, draw the navel in, come all the way up to sitting. And once again, we're going to move into hero's pose. This time, we're going to sit the buttocks all the way down, hopefully in between the heels, widen them off a little bit further apart than we did before. And we're going to come back onto our elbows. Now, if it feels comfortable to have the thighs together, please do so. If not, don't endanger your knees and feel that, you know, bring space to between the thighs. It's up to you. And then start to come down as far as you can until you really feel a nice stretch coming into the, to the quads. And if you feel that you can come all the way down, do so and to get a nice stretch and opening through the shoulders, you can lift the arms up, bring them above the head and clasp the elbows, only if that's comfortable. Flatten through the back. Taking a few deep inhalations here, you should feel a nice long stretch, as I said, through the quads. Make sure that the knees are safe and if it doesn't feel good to have the legs together, then just ease them apart. Draw the navel in towards the spine, flatten through the back, inhale and exhale deeply. Release the hands back to the feet. If it's comfortable, take hold of the heels or have the thumbs over the insteps and the hands wrapped around the base of the ankles. Draw the navel in, come up onto the elbows if you're not there already. You could already be on the elbows. In fact, you could be further up if, depending on how tight your quads are. I'm going to come up onto my hands. This is where a lot of you may already be. If it's comfortable for you, we're going to push up. Now you may only just get to here. And if you do, widen through the shoulders, draw up through the sternum. So we're looking at widening and dropping the shoulders. If it feels comfortable to come up a little bit further, come up onto your knees a little bit further and take hold of the heels and drop the head back.
Draw your shoulders apart and the collarbones apart, flatten through, widen through the shoulders, and then exhale, we're gonna come all the way down and find ourselves between our heels again. Coming forward onto the hands once again, pop the buttocks up once more. We're gonna come into another deep little stretch. We're going to this time stride, come into the equestrian pose or the lunge pose. We're gonna lift the right leg, stride it forward towards the hands. And then we're gonna place the right hand to the inside of the right foot and the arm runs up alongside the calf and we're going to push the back leg back stretch it out and lower the hips down towards the floor you should feel a real opening through the hip and hip flexor a deep stretch into the psoas also coming all the way through. I'm feeling it in the insides of the thighs as well. So we're getting good stretch through the adductor muscles. Lower and push back. Toes are flat on the floor and push the heel towards the back of the room. And then drop the knee and we're going to slide the hands back towards the knee and flatten through the right leg so the chest comes down towards the bent knee and we have nice length all the way through the gastrocnemius and the hamstring and just lower your head down to where it's comfortable if you want a little bit more of a stretch you can draw the toe back you will feel a difference if you draw the toe back towards the head. Inhale and exhale here and just hold this for just maybe 10 or 20 more seconds. 30 more seconds breathing deeply. to bring the hands back down by the sides, push up and come back to where we started. Okay, we're just going to hold this for just a few seconds. We're going to bring the hand back to the inside once again. We're going to go a little bit deeper into that psoas, psoas stretch. If it feels comfortable, we drop down onto our elbows, prayer pranamasana to the hands and we tuck the calf and knee in towards the upper arm and shoulder. Couple of breaths here. Push back into the heel. And then place the hands once again onto the floor. Fingers spread wide, push off, and come back into your downward dog. And we're gonna move straight to the opposing sides. So we've got the left leg now we're going to stride it to the outside edge of the left arm and we're going to lower the hip towards the floor push back into the back heel lower a little bit further feel that deep stretch breathing deeply full rhythmic breaths and then drop that knee and push the buttocks back over the heel as you slide the hands towards the bent knee and then just come down as far as is comfortable rest where it feels comfortable Draw the head down towards the knee. If you feel like you'd like that little bit more of an extension, you can take hold of the toe of the extended leg. And you draw it back towards your shoulder. Draw the navel in.
the hands back towards the knee, push off and coming back up into an equestrian pose or deep lunge, bring the hand back to the inside of the lower leg and we're going to pop down onto our elbows once again, push back into the heel, drop the hips down towards the floor, hug the lower calf or the calf and the knee towards the upper arm and shoulder, breathing deeply. The head just remains in neutral, the hands are in prayer. away from the ears, tuck the chin in, length through the neck, inhale, draw the knees up towards the shoulders, exhale, lengthen the knees down towards the floor, and just do this a few times. I'm going to 
ask you to continue this for as long as you have time today. If it's if you need to move on, then you will gently and safely turn over on to the right and spend a little bit of time on the right before coming up and releasing. Thank you for joining me today. I'm, this is going to be part one of a two-part series for runners and walkers, so look out for the second part. Namaste.